This video is sponsored by the Motion Can Team. In this video, I'm gonna go over and break down what I feel is the ultimate graphics pack. Whether you get into motion graphics or looking for motion graphics for your own personal projects or client work, the Motion Cam team has you covered with this graphics pack. Back up called Toho Graphics 4.1. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. You're gonna find a PDF readme file that's actually gonna have links to it with all the necessary fonts that you need. With it being PDF, the links are here. You just simply click on the font name and it'll load up the web browser and take it to the next area website to download the fonts. Now you are able to use the content in the pack without downloading the fonts, but you'll get a blank screen. I'll get more into that later. Next, you have the install. They actually have a custom installer they created themselves. You can simply double click and they do all the work for you. Or if I go back and type on manual install, go to files. There's a DRFX file. You can simply double click and install as well. Now, regardless of which method you use to install, it only will install probably, I would say probably like 90% of the pack. That's because if you go in here into extra materials, you get glitch effects, elements, overlays. These are different video overlays you can just import into your project. You also have sound effects as well. I think it's like 600 sound effects I think I saw. Now these sound effects you're not able to install, of course. But there is a workaround where you can add them to your sound library. I'll get more into that later as well. Now within DaVinci Resolve to access the content of the pack, go over to effects. On the toolbar, you can type in the search bar, Toco. I'm gonna hit this little drop down arrow to maximize it. From here, you can see all the assets in the different categories they fall in. Earlier, I mentioned if you use the pack without downloading the fonts, you'll get a blank screen, but it's an easy workaround to that. And if you go into the effects tab and hover over it, you actually get a demo of it. That only occurs if you have the font installed. Say for instance, this one here, the typography 43, if I take it and drag it onto my timeline, it doesn't display. If I click on it, go into the inspector tab and hit edit text, I can simply change the font and then you're able to see the graphic. I'm just go over here and hit this drop down in the inspector tab. And you see there's actually multiple areas of text. If you've been to change the font on the top and it doesn't display, that means you need to go through and change all of them. So sometimes they might have four, five, maybe six different layers of fonts. Change the fonts for every one of them. They have a number of backgrounds they actually fall underneath titles. As you drag and drop it, you'll see it has the same kind of like brownish display as a normal title does. But they're all animated. So if you go in here and hit play, that first playback is gonna be a little choppy, you're gonna need to let it render. Now in the inspector tab, of course, you can customize these backgrounds and pretty much anything to your liking. I'm simply going to your inspector tab and hit the drop down. In this instance, you can just change the color. That's all there's pretty much there is. And you can change it to anything you want, and you get an instant uh, preview. Now, whenever you drag and drop a graphic into your timeline, it's gonna be preset to whatever your default time is. Usually like five seconds. So if you hit play, you'll see animate in. It pretty much quickly animates out. Time of the reference can be stressed out simply by grabbing the handle. So grab the little handle here, wait till you see the icon change on your cursor, and just stretch it out. Now, instead of playing for the default five seconds, it'll play for 18 seconds. So now if I go in here and hit play, the graphic animates in, and it holds its position. And it's still animated out at the end. Of course, you can make customizations in the inspector tab. I mentioned earlier how these graphics can have multiple sections of text. So this one here has three. The little, the little toco at the end, if you want to just get rid of it, just go in and simply delete. Color these highlights, you can simply go in here, select, and pick another color. This is actually going to be the glow in the background. And then I scroll down here and actually change the element color. Now, say for instance, I wanted just the graphics, but I didn't want the actual background. I can go in here with this background color and click and change it to black. Hit OK. Then I'll go down here to where it says alpha and drop it down to zero. Now, you can't see anything right now, but I'm going to bring in this little piece of footage. Now I have the text and the full animation of that pack, but I don't have the background, so I can actually see my footage underneath. You have a bunch of social media controls and emojis and things like that. So we hit play on this one, get the thumbs up. You, of course, you can go in and change the text. You have the cool title face you can use for like YouTube or any other client projects. And the same thing applies to the other graphics. You can go through here and change the color, text, and all that from the inspector tab. Another thing that's really cool is the logo reveals. So go in here and drop this logo too. I'm gonna drag it down on the timeline. You can scroll through to get a little preview. This here is the logo. So I click on it and go into the inspector tab. Click this little icon here. It's gonna allow me to open Fusion. Now this graphic is bundled as a group. So if I right click and go to ungroup, I'm gonna hold control and zoom out. You get a better look at the actual pack itself. You actually got two groups. If you ungroup this one, you'll get a look at all the nodes that was used in the pack and also the keyframe. This is actually how I learned how to use Fusion by reverse engineering different content packs like this. And I'm gonna hit control Z to regroup it. Then I'm holding control and zoom back in. 
This here where it says your logo, this is actually a placeholder. So if I go into my media pool and grab my channel logo, I'm gonna drop it right on the node that says logo. From there, I'm gonna ask me, do I wanna replace logo? So I'm gonna hit okay. And you see my logo pop up there. Now, of course, that's not the design of my actual logo as far as the coloring. And the graphics pack itself will actually will change the color to actually fit the theme of the graphics pack. You know, it's a little small and kind of over to the left a little, we can easily change that. I'm going here to logo transform. I'm gonna double click. Go ahead and the inspector tab, I can increase the size. And I can use these little notches here, or I can move the center and Y axis, the center X and center Y axis to move it around. Then I go back to the first keyframe. I hit play. Is it animating in? It will animate in with my logo. And something that's cool that will save you a lot of time is that the packs actually automatically adjust themselves if you want to repurpose video. For example, if you take a horizontal video and you want to make it a vertical for like a TikTok or Instagram reel, it automatically rescales itself. So here I have the demo I just did with my logo. If I go into the little cogwheel down here, if you're on DaVinci Resolve 18.1 or higher, you actually have this little checkbox. It says use vertical resolution. If not, you simply go in here and type in 1080 by 1920 and then hit save. It automatically rescales itself, filling in the whole frame and the animation adjusts itself accordingly. And this rescaling is something that applies to all the content within the graphics pack. And this last one can be kind of intense on your computer, so it uses your own discretion. All right, so I got this on the timeline. Same thing as before, I'm actually going to go into the icon and inspect the tab and I'm open in Fusion. Of course, we have the placeholder here. I'm going to the media pool. I'm actually drop this little video here into the placeholder. Once again, you're going to ask me, do I want to replace it? I'm going to say, okay. And you actually can see the video now is actually displayed within the cell phone. I'm going to change this to single viewer and close my media pool. I'm going to right click here. I'm actually going to turn off high quality and motion blur just to get a smoother playback. Again, if you ungroup the nodes, you can actually see all the nodes that were used. You can tell a lot of time and effort was put into this one effect. And this same effort was put into nearly 2,000 different assets. <laughs> there you can see the video clip playing. Then you can also go through and actually edit your text as well. Now the pack does come with a crap ton of sound effects that can't be installed. So you have to go through and fish them out or you can add them to your sound library. So you go over here to the top here and go to sound library. And click this little three dot menu here. And hit add to library. And then you're just gonna navigate to where you download the folder. So here I have the folder under extra materials, sound effects, I'm just gonna hit select folder. It's gonna go through and scan all those sound effects and add it to my sound library. And once it's done, just hit okay. Now of course, we don't know the name of these sounds. So we actually can go in here and search. You wanna hold down shift or I think it's options on Mac and hit eight to bring up the little Asher star. Do that three times and it's gonna list all the sound effects you have in your library. Now from there, you can scroll through all your sound effects. You can double click to actually play it. And if that's the sound effect you want, just drag and drop it on your timeline. Unfortunately, I'm not able to demo it, but all these assets are actually customizable and usable on the iPad as well. For anyone not to know, Blackmagic actually made a, I guess an iPad version of DaVinci Resolve in which these assets and other assets are actually available. Other than that, I find this pack to be well worth the money. I find it amazing that these assets are scalable and adjustable automatically from horizontal video to vertical video. I didn't really get into it too much, but there's a crap ton of social media outcomes. They have customizable Instagram layouts, yeah, Facebook and YouTube comment sections. They also got different text message chat bubbles as well. So once again, we'll shout out to Motion Cam Team for sponsoring today's video. If you have any questions about the graphics pack, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. I try to reply to all comments. Other than that, once again, you'll find the link below the like button and I'll see you in the next video.